Thank you so much for the introduction. I'm really uh, excited to be here. Uh, I've, been, I've known Product School for about four years since the very beginning, and I've known Carlos for a while, so it's really exciting to see the growth and, and be here in front of you. Thank you. My name is Daniel Elizalde. I've been doing product for about 20 years. I uh, started as an engineer, and I moved all the way to head of products. Uh, my focus has always been connected products, what we call IoT today. I've been doing for about 20 years, and today I focus on coaching companies and product teams around the world on how to create IoT product strategies. So today I'm going to talk to you about the role of product management in the security of IoT. It's a little bit of a different topic, but I want to take the opportunity of being in front of this product leader's audience to share this message on what I believe uh, this is how the profession needs to evolve. So by now probably you've heard about the Internet of Things this network of connected devices that have sensors and have processing power that can acquire data of their surroundings and it can send all that to the cloud so that we can provide some value to customers and to our companies. It's a revolution in technology that it's here to stay. And I don't have to you know, go a lot deeper in that. You probably heard a lot of the statistics about how IoT is going to have billions of devices connected in the coming years or that the opportunity in economic gain is enormous. There's trillions of dollars to be gained from this opportunity. And you probably heard that there is strong investment from a lot of different companies into this revolution. Uh, a recent survey from Cisco found out that about 65 to 70 percent of all companies are investing somehow in the Internet of Things. What that means is that IoT will become the new normal. And that has a big impact for our profession as well. Because we have to understand as product managers what it takes to manage an IoT product and be ready for this. Now, it's a big opportunity and it's here to stay and we're gonna see it evolve. But unfortunately, the one threat to this huge business opportunity is security. We see it all the time when we look at the news in the media, the first thing that we see associated with connected devices is that they were hacked, that the trust of the customers is not very high, and it's a big problem, and it's eroding at this opportunity. So in fact, today, security is the biggest challenge that we have today. And it's easy to see how. If you think about devices like this, smart home devices that connect to the internet, if they were hacked, there's a lot of risk in data breaches, privacy breaches, and you can see why people are a little bit worried about them. But to be honest, I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. The real potential of the Internet of Things will come on the industrial side. There's a lot of different industries that are making big investments to leverage the same type of technology for much bigger problems that affect the world today. For example, in the energy industry, we can leverage the exact same technology to add sensors to the electricity grid to provide more resilience for our power stations. Through IoT, we can also um, accelerate the integration of renewables into the smart grid. Technology like wind, solar, energy storage, it's all based on these concepts of interaction with each other through smart connected devices. We're seeing a lot of investment in our water supplies. By adding sensors to our water plants, we can determine whether the uh, water is polluted, whether we have leaks in our water pipes, and pr provide a lot of different benefits for this type of companies and make sure that they are efficient and they reduce cost while they're taking water where it needs to go. Another interesting example is smart farming. Farms are adding sensors to the ground to determine whether the soil has the right nutrients, whether the plants have enough level of water and they should automate the irrigation systems, whether there are pests so that they can figure out if the uh, crops are going to be affected. And this is true not only at the, the production stage, which is the farm, but throughout the whole supply chain of food, from harvesting to transportation, to cold storage, etc. The Internet of Things plays a big role here. 
we see huge examples in transportation. One of the most common examples that we see, especially here in Silicon Valley, have to do with autonomous vehicles. By adding sensors and processing power to the cars, we can have amazing things with vehicles that drive themselves. But again, this is just one portion of the impact. We are also seeing a lot of introduction of IoT into smart airplanes, trains, ships, and all sorts of modes of transportation. So when you think about the Internet of Things in this context, in the industrial context, then the aspect of security becomes a lot more scary. Because all of a sudden, we're not talking only about loss of data or privacy. Because these devices are connected to the real world and interact with the real world, a breach in security could actually end up killing people. So lives are affected. And therefore, the security of this takes a very, very different dimension. Imagine what would happen if a self-driving car is hacked and is used to provide a terrorist attack. Or if an airplane is hacked. Or if somebody hacks a power utility, cutting the electricity for a whole a block or a city or a country. The prospects of that are terrifying. But unfortunately, we don't have to imagine those things because they are happening today. We're getting report after report of utilities being hacked and losing electricity, water plants, manufacturing plants, vehicles in motion. So the prospects are very, very scary. And this, like I said, is the one biggest challenge that's going to affect the IoT opportunity that we have in front of us. Now, one of the questions that I often get is, why is it that IoT is so prone to hacking? What is it about IoT that makes it so complex? Well, there's a couple of approaches that I'd like to share with you here. One of them is that a connected device is much more complex than a non-connected device. Every IoT product, regardless of whether it is a consumer product, an industrial product, enterprise product, they all have the same five building blocks. They have device hardware, that's where the sensors are and the processing power. They have device software, they have a communications channel, they have a cloud platform, and um, cloud applications. Now, if you're familiar with managing, let's say, a mobile app, probably you are just working with a portion of this section. And you know how difficult it is to secure a mobile app. So imagine that all of a sudden you have five different layers, extremely complex, that now are open up for attacks. Not only the layers themselves, but the integration between those different layers. So your attack vector just grew exponentially. Also, in IoT products, we have this concept of cyber-physical security. Not only we have to deal with IT-type security, but also with actual physical devices that usually are at arm's reach. People can actually go grab them, manipulate them, open them, connect things to them, so the attack vector becomes much more complicated to manage. So here I'm talking about the technology aspects of why IT, IoT is much more harder to secure. But to be honest, I believe that's just one aspect. I believe that IoT security is a product management challenge. It is not a security only on the technology side challenge. As product managers, and you've heard a lot about this talks, so we're responsible for providing value to our customers through the end-to-end -end life cycle of our product, from conception to release. That means that we have to be responsible for all the different areas that involve our product, security being one of them. For the past couple of years, I've been running this informal uh, survey. I've been wanting to know how much product managers are involved in securing their products. Um, I've personally trained over 700 product leaders around the world on IoT product strategy. So whether it's through my online courses, whether it's me teaching at Stanford University, or it's working as an advisor directly with companies, every time we get to my module on IoT security, I always like to ask the question, how many of you are involved in securing your product? 
And regardless of the forum, regardless of where is it in the world, I always get a similar answer. And the answer is about 8%. 8% of the product leaders that I talk to are involved in securing their products. So that means that about 92% are pawning off the security of their product to somebody else. Maybe it's an engineering problem, maybe just don't think about it and it will go away. But that is very challenging, right? Who is owning security? Our profession has evolved throughout the years very, very rapidly. And now we are more comfortable describing our boundaries of what do we do and what is our role. In 2011, Martin Erickson created this image to describe the different areas where product managers live. And we use this very often. In fact, it's one of the logos on the website for this conference. And so we say that we are at the intersection of UX, technology, and business. And this representation has been extremely valuable for us to be able to get some identity of what is it that we do. It's a very complex product, uh, a job that we have. So this has been very, very useful. Another thing that I like about this diagram is that it also shows relationship. It tells us that every decision that we make in technology has a UX implication. And every UX implication has a business implication. And business decisions have a technology implication. As you know, prioritization is one of the key things we do. And so we're always trying to balance the relationship between UX, business, and technology. And as much as this diagram has served us, I think that in an era of connected devices, it is lacking. So I'd like to propose an updated type of diagram for this new era that we're getting into. And I would like to expand it by saying security should be a pillar of what product managers need to be responsible for. By putting it in the forefront, it's not forgotten, it's not somebody else's responsibility, it is there as part of the core things that we as a profession need to make sure we are thinking about. It also helps us with the trade-offs. See, security is not just about technology. We can think about the different implications by saying, well, security, of course, has technology implications because it helps us select the type of technology, select the processes, the testing procedures, etc. But it also has business implications. Securing your device has cost. It will affect your ROI. It can affect uh, the benefits perceived by others about your product, so it can be a differentiation aspect. And of course, it has a UX component. We have to find that balance between making sure that our products are secure and are easy to use. And what I see very often today is that that ease of use trumps everything else, and everything gets pushed aside. So now, by bringing these four pillars to the forefront, now we can say we need to find the balance between UX, business, technology, and security. So how do we get there? I'd like to offer three ideas on how I see a profession can start moving forward. And it's basically saying what is the role of the product manager going to be regarding security and connected devices. So the first thing is, let's learn about security. Very important, let's get conversant about the importance of security. And every time I mention this, people immediately jump into the implementation side. Do you mean we need to understand the security aspects of the kernel we're using? Do we need to uh, learn crypto? Do we need to learn ID management? Again, that's implementation. That's what engineering is going to provide for us. We need to take a step back and think about strategically throughout the whole product life cycle. We need to learn what is the life cycle of security? How does it map with our development life cycles, both for hardware and for software? What is the implication of applying security at the design stage, at the develop stage, but also once your device is out in the field, how will you know it's been attacked? How would you contain the attack? How would you quarantine it? All those are product decisions, and that is what I suggest we should be learning about, the strategy behind security of our product. And there's, of course, a lot of books and a lot of courses and a lot of things you can do as a product manager, but I think as a, as a discipline, 
we need to start thinking about these areas because we have evolved a lot and we've learned UX right, throughout the years. A lot of us came from engineering and we had to learn UX. Uh, we had to learn business, right? So I think we have to learn to be conversant in this area as well. Number two is plan and advocate for security in your product. See, as product managers, we have two main tools at our disposal. One is a roadmap, and the other one is influence. We take the vision from the company, and we work together with other teams to draft the roadmap, and we are ruthless with prioritization selecting what goes in, what doesn't go in, timelines, etc. My request is let's do the same thing with security. Security should be an item in your roadmap. Security should be defended against other items, should be prioritized across other items. Because otherwise, if it's not in the roadmap, it's just never going to get done. We need to stop pushing it and making sure that we take responsibility for it as opposed to others owning that responsibility. And last, seek expert advice. The same way that we've partnered with the design team in UX, and we partner with finance and sales and accounting on the business side, and we partner with engineering, hardware and software, we need to partner with security teams. We need to be conversant to know their lingo and to know their life cycle, but we need to rely on those experts and we need to bring them as part of our teams. The product team needs to be expanded to include security. And I truly mean security practitioners, not our engineer that read a book and all of a sudden is a resident expert. That's just not gonna cut it in the era of connected devices. See, the idea of move fast, break things, doesn't work when you're talking about industrial connected devices when lives are at stake. So seek expert advice, partner either internally or externally to bring that expertise. And let's start bringing it into our normal developer process. So to close, I'd like to revisit this idea from uh, Marty Kagan from his book, Inspired. He mentions that the role of product managers is to build products that customers love. And we've used this statement a lot to also define our identity. Product managers build products that customers love. In the era of the connected devices, I think we need to evolve this statement as well. And what I propose is that we need to focus on building products that customers trust. And from trust, love will come later. Thank you so much. <laughs>